Hello, planty friends. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me. So today I thought it'd be fun. Actually, that's not true. This wasn't even my idea. This is actually suggested to me by someone on my Patreon. And I've also seen others do this style of video and I love it. I know that Kevin does this and yeah, they're just so fun and satisfying to watch. So I'm gonna be showing you a handful of plants. Um, I'm gonna show you them when I first got them and then I'm gonna show you what they look like today. So we're kind of gonna get to see the growth difference and most of them, they've grown quite a lot. So it's just interesting to see what plants first looked like when people first got them. I went through a bunch of my old videos and I've pulled some clips from 2019, 2020, and 2021, I believe. So it's gonna be so fun to kind of go back in time and just see how much progress these plants have made. Let me know if you're into this type of video. I could definitely do more because I obviously have a lot of plants. This video is kindly sponsored by Native. So before we hop into the plants, I'm gonna speak about them really quick. It is no secret that I love Native's products. If you go look in my bathroom, you're gonna find a lot of them. I initially tried them out because I was looking for body care that is effective, but also made with clean and simple ingredients, which is exactly what this is. This is their body wash and it's made with plant-based cleansers. It's phthalate and dye-free, and it is of course also vegan and cruelty-free. This works so well. I've been using their body washes for quite some time now. They lather beautifully. They leave my skin nice and soft. This actually also has citric acid in it, which balances the pH of your skin. So it always leaves my skin super happy. I love that even though Native is so focused on using clean and simple plant-based ingredients, you don't have to miss out on the whole kind of luxurious experience and ritual of using your body care products. They offer so many fantastic scents and they're always coming out with new seasonal scents as well. So it's still, you still get the whole experience. You know what I'm saying? Because at least for me, that's something that's also really important. So I'm holding this one up because this is a scent that I'm obsessed with for spring and summer. It's so fresh and clean. This is their cucumber mint body wash scent. Another one that I'm absolutely loving right now is their coconut and vanilla scent. This is a classic. I know a lot of you are big fans of this scent from them. And the reason that I'm also using this one right now and really loving it is because, well, first of all, it smells amazing. It's coconut and vanilla. Like you cannot go wrong with that. It's just like subtly sweet and soft and comforting, but also I'm using the coconut and vanilla deodorant from them right now. So I love having a scent to match the deodorant that I'm using. I've been using Native's deodorants for years, so it's really nice to be able to match up the scents with my body washes as well. They also offer a lot of other great products on their website too, like hand and body lotion. So you can really treat yourself to the whole package if you wish. And if you would like to do just that, now is a fantastic time because if you use the link, which is down below in the description box and my code wildfern11, you can get 20% off of your first order with Native. This offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited time. So make sure to stock up and save. Thank you so much to Native for sponsoring this video. Now let's hop into the first plant. Okay, I've had to back you up a little bit because some of these plants are quite large. So I figured we would start with, I have a couple from 2019, so I guess we'll just go kind of chronologically. So I'm gonna start with those. And it's a couple of Hoya. You can probably see them on the screen. Side note, I thought that this video would be interesting to kind of, a lot of the plants I'm gonna be showing you are plants that you know, you've know you seen before, you're familiar with, but especially for people who are newer to my channel, I think it'll be nice to kind of give some background on these plants. So yeah, we're gonna start with a couple of the classics in my collection. The first one is my Hoya Crimson Queen. Now, yes, she is massive. We know her, we love her, she truly is a queen. Um, but the crazy thing is, when I went back to look for footage on this plant from when I first got it, I was honestly kind of shocked because in my memory, this plant was bigger than what it actually was when I got it. Like for some reason, I thought that this plant has kind of always been this big. Like I'm like, oh, I know it's growing and getting bigger, but I just, I don't know. I always thought that it was massive, but when I got it, it was not massive. Like it wasn't really trailing that much. It definitely was not as full. It just, it was only a fraction of the size. So I'm even more appreciative and impressed with just how far this plant has come. 
I remember when I saw this in the garden store and decided to get it, I was humming and hawing about it. Uh, it was like $60 for the pot, which is kind of expensive, but obviously it was totally worth it because I love it. I've had this plant for years now. And uh, yeah, I actually bought it labeled as Hoya Carnosa Tricolor. So that's the same. If you see that name, it's interchangeable with Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen or I guess the Crimson Princess could also be called that. It's just like any, it's just, it's just indicative of the coloring. This has green, white, and pink on it as well. So yeah, I brought it home and it has literally never caused me any trouble. This plant has not had a pest. It has not ever had any type of rotting issues or it's literally just been perfect. And yeah, I love it so much. It's growing a ton right now. Every time I take it down from its spot, which by the way, it needs to be watered, so I'm gonna keep it down from its spot. But every time I take it down, I always kind of do a quick little check for peduncles and I still am not finding any, which is kind of unfortunate, but that's okay. She'll bloom when she's ready. Anyways, yeah, can you guys believe how much this has grown? Like, it is just crazy. I wonder when I'm gonna repot this because I've had it since 2019 now. I should probably do it one of these years, but for now the plant is just doing so well, so I'm not in any rush. But yeah, this is going to be the first one that I have to show you the before and after and yeah, I think it's a really great one to start with because it's funny how sometimes we don't really notice how much progress our plants have made until we look back on older photos or older videos. At least for me, this is something that happens honestly all the time. I'll just be shocked at what my plants looked like before because they grow so gradually in our care and you know we see them every single day. So to see the contrast of an old photo versus now, it's just, it's so crazy. This is definitely a plant that's gonna be staying with me until, you know, hopefully into my old age. Like, how cool would that be? I know some people have Hoya Carnosa that are like 50 years old and stuff, like heirloom ones even, and yeah, that's just so neat. So I really feel like this is a plant that I'm gonna have for a long, long time. Okay, I just went and watered her, so she's hanging out in the sink now. But the next one is another Hoya. I just happened to get like two of my most iconic Hoya around the same time, I guess. This is my Hoya Compacta. And this one I do remember was very small when I got it. That's something that has stuck in my brain because I just got it as a little four inch pot from a big box store, you know, for probably like $8.99 or something like that. And I've just been waiting patiently for it to grow and it has definitely delivered because now this thing is just so long. I think the footage that I have of this plant is from, well, it's from 2019, but it was after I'd had this plant for a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can find any photos or anything from like when I very first got this plant, but I really don't know if I have any. I'm pretty sure it was only one little vine though. Anyways, the footage that I do have of it is still from when, you know, it was a lot smaller, but I had already had it for a while. This plant again has literally never caused me any issues. And I feel like that's a theme with a lot of the really large plants in my collection because they're, they're not plants I've ever had to like completely cut back because of rot or pests or anything. They've just been consistently growing for years and it's kind of like slow and steady wins the race kind of vibes because the this is like a, not really a fast growing plant, but since it's been several years, it is quite long now. I've also taken, have I given away cuttings from this? No, I know I propagated this once, but I'm pretty sure I just added the cutting back into here. I ended up potting this plant into this pot, which is I believe a six inch terracotta planter. I did that in 2020, I'm pretty certain. And I think that that's when I added like the propagation I took into the pot to make it just nice and full. Um, so it's been a few years now that it's been in this pot and I don't know when I plan to repot it again. Like it seems happy in here, it's growing. There's new vines, several new vines coming in, which is really cool. I'm probably gonna end up repotting this whenever I decide to um, like display it as a hanging plant because I love the way it looks in the terracotta, but I would really l love to see this just hanging in my home one day. Like what a showstopper that would be. So I was probably just gonna stay in this pot until I'm able to do that. But yeah, it is just, oh my goodness. Like 
in one of the videos that I was watching, I was actually saying when the plant was smaller, this was in like 2019, I was saying like, oh, I see people with those big pots of Hoya Compacta and they're trailing down and so beautiful and I can't wait until I have that one day and, or I hope I have that one day. And here I am now years later with the very same plant in like the larger, more mature form. So it's just so cool once you've been in the hobby for a while. I mean, it's very, all stages of the hobby are fun and cool because the beginning, I love thinking back to when I first got into houseplants in the beginning, it's just like such a, such a, such a nice memory. But also now that I've been in the hobby for a while, it's so cool to have plants in my collection that I've had for several years. And it's, it's amazing that there's people in this hobby that have been in this hobby for decades, because I can't imagine what kinds of, you know, memories they have attached to their plants and just how much experience they've had. It's just, it's really neat. So I'm kind of having just like, getting a glimpse of that and finding more appreciation in my plants, some of the ones that I've had for a really long time. So yeah, that's kind of how I feel about this plant. I'm very proud of it. I love it so much. And yeah, I'm just, it's so cool to see how far it's come. If only my variegated ones would start growing now because I would honestly croak if I had a variegated one that was this big. Oh my gosh, that's in my dreams now. Okay, I do actually have one more plant that I wanted to talk about that I got in 2019, which this one is just kind of, kind of comical because I've had this plant for so many years now. Got it in August of 2019, I believe. And it's, you know, pretty unimpressive size wise, which if you've been on my channel for a while, then you know the journey that I've had. And if you are new here, this is my Monster Thai Constellation and we have been on a journey and I have a whole playlist if you would like to uh, hear about it. This thing has rotted several times. We're finally getting on a good track, it seems here. Like the roots are healthy, it's growing. I'm very happy with it right now, but it's just funny. And I had to show this one because again, this is just like another classic plant on my channel and classic plant to my collection. This was the first ever rare plant that I ever got. so. It is quite sentimental to me. I love it very much, even though it's caused me so much grief, but it's funny because a, a lot of these plants that I'm gonna be showing in today's video are, you know, they've had an impressive transformation in my opinion, but this one, if you look at other people's Thai constellations that they got in 2019, you're gonna see big mature Monstera Thai constellations. And then here's mine. The newest leaf does not even have a fenestration. Like, are you kidding me? I've literally had this thing for coming up to four years now. I will say though, that the variegation is looking stunning. Like look at these streaks of cream. How pretty is that? I love the variegation on Thai Constellation. The super variegated ones. Oh my goodness. I would love to have one like that one day. Um, but yeah, this it's just, you know, one of my, one of the oldest videos that I have on my channel is repotting this plant for the first time. And that was when it was, uh, the first time I discovered it was rotting. And then it just, you know, it was just downhill from there. But I was so excited when I first got it. So it's always gonna hold a nice sense of nostalgia for me in that way. It was literally just like the tiniest little juvenile Monstera you could possibly get. Like it honestly just looked like a pothos or something. So yeah. It's been a darn time. This has been repotted so many different times, rerooted so many different times. Um, I actually had it in semi-hydro growing in LECA for a while, which it loved. It did so well in LECA until the reservoir ran dry during a heat wave and the roots dried up and it rotted. After that, I didn't, I didn't go for semi-hydro anymore, but actually I think I might have. I think I tried and it rotted the second time. Oh my goodness, I don't know. It's been a whole thing. So I'll link the Thai Constellation playlist down below if you haven't seen it yet. But yeah, I'm very pleased to say that it seems to be doing well now. This happened because I dropped the plant, which is unfortunate and seems to be a theme with some of my Monsteras right now. My Aurea also got dropped and has damage on the leaf, which is annoying. But yeah, uh, there's also two plants growing in here currently. And this is so, there's so many roots in the pot. Like, I don't know what to do because I don't really want to size it up into a bigger pot. Like that's, it's already in a pretty big pot. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. But yeah, there is two plants in here now because at one point I propagated it and then just decided to try to root two, two of them in case I lost one. And they both survived luckily. 
And so now that's why there's two plants in here. The nice thing about this plant is that it has been really easy to reroot. Like I've never had a problem with that. It's always rerouted for me. So it's really hardy in that sense. Like propagation is super easy. But as for not getting root rot and just growing it well, that can be the difficult part, you know? And it also grows very slowly. But that does mean it's very exciting when you get a new leaf. Anyways, I honestly think she's looking pretty good. Like this is the best she's ever looked, wouldn't you say? Like beautiful. And when I went back and watched my old videos, I actually remembered that I gave a name to this plant. That's how much I loved it. I named it Olaya, and I guess I just kind of forgot about that name over time because it started causing me so much grief. Um, I don't name a lot of my plants. Very few of them have names. Greta has a name, my Marble Queen Pothos, and I think that's pretty much it. But this was another one that I actually named Olaya after a song that I really like. Um, but yeah, maybe I should start calling her by her name and she will appreciate life more. Anyways, I thought that would be kind of a fun one to share and just to show you what it used to look like and how much or how little it has grown over the years. Okay, this one I took out of the cover pot so she's hanging out in her little yogurt container because the cover pot's actually zip tied to my bed. So every time I show y'all the plant in the cover pot on my channel, I have to cut that zip tie and it's just kind of wasteful. So um, yeah, she's just rocking the yogurt pot today. But this is my Hoya Linearis. As you can see, I know you have to like pry this thing out of my hands to get it off of this channel because I will not stop talking about it. I'm obsessed. Um, this is probably my favorite Hoya of all time. Not probably, it is my favorite Hoya of all time. I'm just, yeah. If she has one fan, it's me. Anyways, when I was going through the old footage, I was honestly shocked and alarmed to see what this plant looked like when I first got it. Um, I first got it, we are moving into 2020 now. I think I have a month on this one. June 2020 is when I first got this plant. And the summer of 2020, y'all, this is when I really started getting more uncommon plants. I started getting more uncommon Hoya, especially. Hoya were very hot. This plant was very hot, like it was very hard to find. I remember looking for it locally, like looking for just a cutting. Could not find one. Um, I was drooling over photos of people's like nice full long ones. And yeah, I just needed one, wanted her so badly. So I ended up ordering just a small tiny cutting. I think that it came from Crystal Star Nursery. I also think that I paid a, a bit of an arm and a leg for it. These Hoya were going for a lot more than they are going for today, but I was honestly so happy to pay it. I was like, take my money. It was, you know, back in those days, it was like a race to get a plant into your cart and check out before it sold out. And I remember it was like that with um, this plant and like Hoya polyneura as well. That was another one that was like, everyone was trying to get it. Um, anyways, so I got this plant as just a very small, well, you'll see it on the screen, just a very small little baby. And I, I just, I cannot believe how much it's grown. And this I have chopped multiple times. I used to cut this up and just sell like the little rooted babies, um, just little baby pots of this. So if I hadn't have done that, this would be even bigger. But even still, like, you know, it's only been what, three years, less than three years. And this is like quite a full long plant, especially in comparison to what it was like when I first got it, like it was literally just so small. Um, yeah, this is one of the fastest growing plants in my collection. It's always putting out new leaves. Um, and yeah, it's just very cute. I love the new growth on Hoya Linearis. So yeah, I thought this would be a really fun one to show because it's a plant that I have on my channel all the time, but I don't know if everyone knows just like how small it started out as. So yeah, it was very, it was quite, um, it's been quite entertaining actually for me to go back like digging on finding footage and photos of what these plants looked like years ago when I first got them because I just, I forget a lot of the time. My Hoya Linearis has not bloomed for me yet, but you know, one day, and I will be a very happy lady when that day comes because, oh my goodness, I think, um, who posted? Maybe Plant Haven Toronto posted a photo of their Linearis with a bunch of blooms the other day. Somebody did, and I was obsessed. Like, it just looks so gorgeous, especially when big trailing Hoya have like multiple blooms on them, or even, not even trailing, like even trellised Hoya, when there's just like a whole bunch of different blooms, it is just like, mm, so perfect. I love that, it's just such a gorgeous look. 
So one day, you know, and we still have a long ways to go on this one. It's still nowhere uh, near as like full. And um, I mean, it's pretty long, but I definitely want it to be more full. I keep chopping it usually when it gets too long because this will get like pretty close to my floor and start getting caught up in my laundry basket and everything. But yeah, love her so much. Hoya Linearis has been such a great grower for me. Again, a plant that has not once had a pest or um, had rotted or like really caused me any trouble at all. It's just been so fabulous, so tolerant. Also very tolerant of different conditions. I was originally growing it, well, I was growing it outside of the cabinet and then I put it in my cabinet and it was very happy. Um, and I was really nervous to take it out because it was going into a lower light situation but I took it out of the cabinet, had absolutely no problems. Like it was fine with just like medium-ish light. It really did not get like any direct light or anything, but it was super happy with that. So yeah, it's just been so easy going for me. Next we have Alocasia Dragon Scale. This is another one that I've shown on my channel a lot. I actually haven't been showing it as much recently though. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, yeah, I just haven't been showing it as much recently because she's kind of taking a break right now. You know, she's kind of in hibernation mode. She was vigorously growing for me for a couple of years and now she's just kind of chilling out, which is completely fine with me. I think that she's actually trying to put a bloom Right now, that's what's happening here. So I probably need to cut that off. I was just waiting to, I don't know what I was waiting for. Okay, I know that this plant was small when I first got it. I remember how small it was, but it still just blows my mind how quickly it grew up into such a beautiful, mature plant. Like honestly, this thing grew at the speed of light. I actually did a whole unboxing video when I got this. I was so excited to get it. Um, this was back, when did I get this? In September of 2020. So these were not commonly available. You had to like special order them from the online plant shops. You couldn't just find these locally like you can now. So I was so excited to get it. And I remember the Silver Dragon was a little bit more accessible and also cheaper, but I really wanted just the green dragon scale, which is what this is, by the way. I get a lot of questions. Um, about what kind of plant this is because it really like, I don't know, it looks like black or blue. Uh, it's actually really interesting, the coloration on this plant because it doesn't look very green, although you can see the younger leaves look green and look just like a typical dragon scale that you would find. I've potted a bunch of different corms in here. So, ooh, here's one that's like, just popping up as well. I planted different corms in here so that this can, they can eventually grow up and this can be a nice full, full plant. But, but yeah, so I ordered this online and it came and I did a whole unboxing video and I was so obsessed with it and so excited. And it was literally, it was like the tiniest. I think it had four little tiny leaves and I was so shocked that it even had four leaves. And um, yeah, I was just so excited to have it. It was such a little cutie. And I think that I grew this in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet for a long time. Like that's how it got really mature quite quickly because it was just in ideal conditions, um, like grow light all year round, high humidity all year round, and a lot of love and attention from me because I was obsessed with it. So eventually it outgrew the cabinet. Now it just lives out in my bedroom, but um, yeah. I still love it very much. This probably needs more light than I'm giving it right now. So uh, it's just difficult to find space for all of the plants in my home right now. Um, but hopefully, you know, sometime soon, I'll be able to get this in a better location because if I was giving this some, some brighter light, you know, maybe some sunlight throughout the day, just like dappled, I think it would really appreciate that or just like really bright indirect light. Um, allocation need a lot of light, you guys, especially to get big leaves. So that, yeah, that's my plan is to eventually get it back into higher light so that I can kind of continue growing because like I said, she's just kind of taking a breather right now, which is fine. Um, but yeah, such a beautiful and rewarding plant. I love it so much. I actually really want the silver dragon too. It's on my wish list because I've just had such a wonderful experience growing this one out. And the dragon scale actually uh, made me love and appreciate and want to try out other different types of alocasia. Like I really did not have many alocasia when I first got this. I don't even know if I had any, honestly. 
I remember I had had them in the past and then I had spider mite issues and I swore them off. But then I got this one and yeah, now I'm obsessed with alocasia, love them. And I have more on my wish list that I would like to get. But yeah, this is kind of the one that just really, really made me appreciate them because I was just so impressed with how big the leaves were getting and just how well it was growing for me. Um, even though it's an alocasia, I've never really had like pest issues or spider mites or anything on this. I don't think it has a very thick leaf. Like this is literally like cardboard, um, very thick. So it's not, it's not typically one that I find the spider mites go for, but yeah, it's just, it's very fun to look back on and I'll link these videos down below if you want to go back and watch them, like the unboxing for this and things. So yeah, very cute. Okay, next we have a big boy, and that is my philodendron billetier. Oh my goodness, how much am I gonna have to back up here? Yeah, this is a massive, massive plant. You can see he has some very, very large leaves. This is actually the newest one right here. Oh, it's still hardening off. Look at how beautiful that is though. Um, yeah, so this is my philodendron billetier, and I actually got this in, um, October of 2021. So just the next month, <laughs> the next month, uh, after I got the dragon scale and I just got this as, first of all, I was shocked when I got this, this was sent to me as a cutting from a friend. And I just couldn't believe that I had this plant because it was just, yeah, it was not easy to find back then. And it was just like, you know, one of those ones that you see online and is just coveted and people want to add it into their collections. That was me, I was people. So yeah, came to me as cuttings, I believe, that I rooted up and it's just, it's been a dream. Like it's been so easy to grow, so um, tolerant to different conditions. Again, I've had it in low light, I've had it in high light. You'll see, I think I had a few leaves, but it was just, you know, a little small plant in comparison to what it is now. Um, and it's just been such a breeze to grow. I've had it in various different conditions again, lower light, higher light. I will say that the only thing is if you're growing it in lower light, you will get long internodes, which is what started happening with mine. Now that it's getting a lot more light, the internodes are a lot smaller. So it's not as stretched out in between. This plant is one that kind of sprawls out like crazy. So if you don't want a plant like that, or you don't have the space to um, let this guy kind of reach out all crazy, however he wants to, then I don't recommend it. But my goodness, it is just, it's such a beautiful plant. So cool to grow. I'm actually going to, I think I might extend the pole. I was thinking of air layering and chopping, but I think I might end up just extending the pole because now that the leaves are getting bigger, I'm just, I'm so curious on what they're gonna look like as it continues to grow, like climb up even more. So we'll see, I might just throw an extension on here and let him continue to grow upwards and size up. But yeah, so impressed with how far this plant has come. And yeah, it's just been so resilient, honestly. Like, you know, this and all the others that I'm showing have moved house with me so many times and just, they've really been put through some situations and here they are just looking so fabulous. Well, most of them, but yeah. Oh my goodness, I just love him so much. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. I can't believe I was thinking about getting rid of this a little while ago. Like I think in the, winter time or maybe like at the in the fall I was thinking of getting rid of my billy and I'm really glad that I didn't because I feel like just now is when it's really oops sorry I feel like now is when it's just like really started to deliver and just like really show me its potential and yeah it's also nice because I've never had an issue with this unfurling or like getting stuck you know how a lot of philodendron have that issue where the leaves can get stuck this one does not have that issue. They just unfurl beautifully. And yeah, it's so satisfying when I see a new leaf coming in on this one. I'm just like, oh baby, make room, make room friends because we got, we got a new one coming in. So yeah, love him so much. And yeah, I just, I feel so lucky that I was given a cutting of this in October of 2020. Okay, another one that I had to throw in here and show you is my Hoya Matilde because I've talked so much about just how fast this Hoya grows. If you'd want a fast growing, easy going Hoya, go for Hoya Matilde. I think it's so beautiful. 
but I've said before, I just got this as a cutting and I finally was able to go back and dig up footage of just what that cutting looked like. And it really truly was just one small cutting of one vine. And that's how I started this whole plant, which is so crazy because I've taken propagations from this multiple times. I've given, I've given those propagations away. I also have just another small little pot of this plant growing right now, which was propagations that I took from this one. So so yeah, this is definitely just a crazy fast growing Hoya. I find this to be one of my most rewarding Hoyas because it's always putting out new vines, always has new leaves coming in. It's so cute. I love, oh my goodness, these new leaves are so cute coming in here. I love them. Yeah, I love everything about this plant, honestly. It's just, it's perfect. I found this plant, like the little vine that I got, just from some random person on Facebook. I was on the hunt for it because in one of my local Facebook groups, somebody was auctioning a cutting of this off, of Hoya Matilde off. And this was a really big thing then, like the people would always just do like auctions of their house plants that they were selling because they were so hot at the time and prices were so high, you could tend to get a lot. And they were selling this one cutting or auctioning this one cutting and I was bidding at it. And I remember I was at work at like on my break, I'm like bidding and like checking it and everything. And then eventually the bids just got so high and I, I think it closed at like $50 for just one little cutting of this plant. And I was like, no, 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 like I'm not spending that. So I didn't end up getting it. But then I just kept thinking about it after and I was like, oh my goodness, like I really want it. Um, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I ended up posting in like a different, uh, like a Canada-wide Facebook group or something like that. And some random person offered to send this to me and I paid $18 for that cutting plus shipping. And um, now I have this whole big plant from it. So glad I didn't end up spending the $50, but yeah, it just goes to show just how prolific this plant is. So even if you just start this off from just a small little cutting, even like a one or two leafer, like I promise you it's gonna grow quickly. So don't worry about it. Um, I definitely think that this is one you can get away with buying small. Some Hoya, some Hoya I find grow just like painfully slow. Um, and it's kind of nicer to invest in a larger plant, but for this one, you know, it's just, it grows like a weed. So yeah, I've had this since, what did I say? August, August, 2020. Again, that was the summer. That was the Hoya summer, you guys, where I was, you know, getting all of these different, um, like in demand Hoyas of, of that time. Um, yeah, so this is one of them and I love it so much. This is again, another one that I just, I'll probably always have with me because I think it's so pretty, so beautiful, has a million peduncles on it, but has never bloomed for me. But one day, one day, I'm always moaning about it having like a hundred peduncles on it, but never blooming for me. I've never had a bloom on this, but you know, I feel like it's gonna happen soon. I have a good feeling. Okay, so this is my philodendron tortum and we are moving into 2021. So I believe I got philodendron tortum in May of Wait, is that right? Yeah, it is. Oh man, it's time is so weird. Yeah, I got this in May of 2021 and it came to me as just one leaf and then I had rot issues. So I ended up having to cut this plant into two nodes and then growing those as wet sticks. So I do have some footage, man, I don't know why it was so hard for me to find footage from this plant, but I did find a clip of this plant in September of 2021 as just a little tiny baby plantlet after I, it grew back from the wet stick. So this plant was basically comprised of just like two little wet stick grown, just like baby plants. So less than two years ago, it was just that, just like a little, you know, one leafer wet stick. And now we have grown into this plant, which I'm quite impressed by this, honestly. Um, Wow, I've got a lot of EFN on this leaf. I wonder what that's about. But yeah, I'm quite impressed with how much this plant has grown. And I just, I think that it looks so good, especially with the bamboo stake. I'm really glad that I went with this option because I was considering doing a moss pole, but I felt like a moss pole would really overpower this plant. However, that was before I got into my um, like clothes back, like the thickly style. Um, moss poles and I think that the thickly poles would actually look good and wouldn't really take away as much as my like bulky mesh DIY poles go. Um, so maybe I would consider that as an option in the future. 
but for now I just I think it looks so good on the bamboo and I'm really happy that I went with that because it's just so sleek and this is a plant that just you know it has such thin um like wispy wispy isn't really the right word but you know what I mean like it just has a very thin leaf structure so um I think that it just looks really sleek with the one little bamboo pole that it's crawling up it does have a smaller second plant growing down here, but I don't know, it's just like the nodes, the internodes are so close together on that one, it can't reach the pole yet, so it's just kind of filling in the bottom, which is kind of cute, like it looks like nice and bushy and lush. But yeah, this plant is pretty big now, honestly, like it's pretty freaking big and I feel like it grew up just so nicely and yeah, I'm really impressed with it. Like the size of some of these leaves, like look at this one in comparison to my hand. I know it's hard to show because this plant is just difficult, but yeah, it's been a really easy plant despite that one um, bout of rot when I first got it, which who knows what that was from, if it was from shipping or if it was rotting before I even got it. The leaf did have some yellow went already on it when I bought it, so it could have been, I could have been just like set up for that before it, it even came into my hands, but yeah, it's been, it's been a joy to grow, honestly, and it's just very laid back. And um, yeah, I'm quite impressed. I am quite impressed with this. I keep just ending up putting all the plants behind me in the kitchen because I need to water them after. It's finally warm here, you guys. It's like, oh my gosh, it's warm out right now. It's like 18 degrees or something. So I think the plants are starting to dry out a little bit quicker now. So I need to, I need to keep up with that. Okay, and last but not least, we of course have my Philodendron Splendid because I just could not make this video without including this plant in it. Uh, I'll forever just be shocked at how fast this plant has grown for me. So I unboxed this in, I believe, September of 2021. So about a year and a half now, and it came to me as just the tiniest little baby. I, I could barely even identify it when I first got it because it was just so juvenile. It was just like a little tiny little cutie and it was also stuck in shipping for a few weeks so it wasn't looking its hottest and yeah I was worried that you know it maybe wouldn't even make it but it did and it started growing rapidly for me. I I just couldn't believe like this and my Alchoco are definitely my fastest growing velvet leaf philodendron. But yeah, I got that plant and it barely took any time to recuperate. Like it basically just started growing and yeah, it just in no time I was able to propagate it and then get it on a pole and everything. And here we are today. And again, this is another plant that I've shown a lot and I'm just, you know, I'm obsessed with it. Okay. I'm just obsessed with it. Uh, it's beautiful though. Like how could I not be? And I've, I grew this myself from just a little tiny baby. So this is another one that I tell people, get them as they're small because you're gonna save money and you're gonna be able to grow it yourself, even without a moss pole. Like I see people grow these with just like a bamboo stake for support or something like that and they still size up beautifully. They're so easy going. Like this is honestly, it's just a dream plant. I've never had any issues with it. So I highly, highly recommend. I am a big fan of the Splendid um, and also Varicosum, which is one of the parents, but this is much easier than than philodendron varicosum in my experience. But yeah, as you can see, we have a new leaf that is just starting to unfurl here, like how exciting. And then there's also another one on the other vine. I actually have two vines growing up this pole. I kind of wish I had three, but I just have two. So that's the other leaf right there. So I'm really excited to see those come out and see how big they're gonna be and everything. But yeah, just a plant that's had just such a major growth explosion in my care. And yeah, I love it so much. And I just, you know, I always have to show it <laughs> any chance I can get. But especially when we're talking about this topic, because it really just went from like, you know, zero to 10 so quickly. <sighs> yeah, if you're wanting to get into climbing philodendron, consider this one. All right, I think that that is going to be it for this video. I hope that y'all enjoyed. Once again, thank you so much to Native for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out their body wash and the other products on their website. You can use the code WILDFERN11 for 20% off of your first purchase. Make sure you use the link down below in the description. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.